everyone. I don't know about you, but when I my life is going through a whole bunch of turmoil, I find that making art is just so much fun. And the more experimental and the more uh, where I have no idea where I'm going, the more that engages a different part of my mind, frees me from whatever's going on and just helps me enjoy my art, which is so much a part of me. So I just wanted to share this with you and I was having so much fun doing this that I uh, <laughs> ended up creating three versions of this. I turned the camera on, I just let it film. This is going to be a shortened version of it and the full long versions of all of these are really too long for YouTube, I think. And so I've put them into uh, one of my workshops, my online workshops, which is called Making Faces. It's free, you can come and join. No obligation, no nothing. Uh, it's just so I don't have these long, great big videos. Anyway, I'm using paper from my Whimsical and Wild book, which is uh, has all sorts of different kinds of papers in it, including collage papers, and I'm going to print on that. Uh, and I'll show you why that's a good idea and a bad idea. I'm also going to be using my palette pastels from the Jane Davenport Making Faces collection that I created with Spellbinders. And I'm going to be using my Jane Davenport X Jelly Arts plate that I created with Jelly Arts. It's a thinner jelly plate and it is fantastic for the types of artwork for mixed media in particular, especially for people who work in art journals like myself. I'm going to be using a reference image, which I just think is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. It's a collaboration between Bita Bozda, who is a uh, Polish makeup artist and stylist, and Ula Koska, who is a photographer. And this is an artistic response to preserving gorgeous Slavic culture. I've got all of their details, follow them on Instagram, Facebook. You can see more of the images from this collaboration. It was an art exhibit in the description box below. So the jelly plate. Oh my gosh, I love using my LTQ pen to draw on it. Now, you may have seen videos um, or things where you can, I've, and I've done them too, where you're using alcohol markers. Well, I started trying the LTQ marker um, in, or I call it a pen, in <laughs> on my Jelly Arts plate. And because it has a brush tip, you just get a beautiful line. Because the ink is so jet black, dense, dries waterproof, and all of those lovely things. It's just a fabulous thing to draw on. Um, I have already been using my jelly plate. So this jelly plate, she has been through a lot of art with me and I have cleaned her with baby oil. Um, this does make it not as um, translucent or so it turns it translucent rather than, than transparent, uh, which you can still see through. You can still trace as you'll see me doing in a second but it does seem to condition the plate a little, junk it up a little, and it just gives the pen, the ink, a little bit more to stick to. So if you're using the LTQ or the Ultimate Pen, which is the other pen there on the screen, uh, on the My Jelly Arts plate and it's beading up, it might just need a little bit more use uh, or a little bit of baby oil. I've also used the Ranger brand um, uh, plate conditioner as well. And that smells quite nice and works fabulously. So what I'm doing here is I've got my beautiful reference image underneath and I'm obviously tracing it. But the reason I'm using a photograph and not using an illustration, one of my illustrations or someone else's, is because I really want to make this as much mine as I can. I'm always trying to do that with my art. Fully encourage you to do that as well. But this is a really great technique if you're not used to using uh, drawing faces uh, or if you find a beautiful image that you really want to encapsulate or recreate in your own way uh, or if you find a type of face that you might not have drawn before that draws you in that you can um, try and uh, include in your artwork. So I'm just using the photograph as a basis and also as a way of showing you this technique. Um, so that, and, and you don't need to trace an image, you can just draw on the plate as well. 
if you make a little mistake, uh, you can always just remove the license to cool ink with a little baby wipe or a moistened towel. And the reason I say copying a photograph rather than illustration is an illustration is already someone's interpretation of reality, their reaction to that. A photograph is closer to reality um, and when you move away from it, it, it's more yours. So that's why I think it's a great idea to use this technique with a photograph as a reference and then work on changing it as much or as you can. That's what I try and do anyway. So I'm not going to be copying every little detail or anything. I want to change the neck. I want to, I've changed the jawline. I've changed the eyes, the hair, but I've got that basic reference underneath. One of the lovely things about the jelly arts plate is when you pick it up, you look at, look through it, you can get an idea of what you're going to be creating. You can, <laughs> you can see it right there and then, and you haven't really committed to anything yet. Now, I'm going to use some of my stamps. I'm using the um, Jane Davenport Squid Ink, which is an archival ink. Everything I use, if, if this is your first time watching me, everything I use just about is Jane Davenport because yeah, I create art supplies and it would be weird if I didn't uh, stand my own art supplies right. So <laughs> I love using my stamps of uh, flowers more than anything on earth. It just saves tons of time. I can get symmetry there, which I think looks kind of cool. And I can work quickly, which I find uh, liberating. I find the stamping takes a little bit longer to dry on my plate. But the license to quill, she's pretty much dry now unless I've put down a really thick puddle of ink. Uh, so I'm, I just have to check that it is dry and you can just do that with a, a piece of paper towel or just with your finger. And if black lifts off, just give it a little extra minute. Don't use a heat gun on it. It'll just dry naturally. Uh, once it's dry, I can start putting on my pastels. I am going to use the Jane Davenport palette pastels from my Making Faces collection. So these are an eyeshadow inspired pastel. There are 72 colors. The, there are four palettes, they all nest together. So you can have 72 gorgeous colors right next to you. And if you have other brands of pastels, these will work perfectly well with them. You can use rather pastels. You can try soft pastels if you like that come in stick form. Um, all I know is that I use my palette pastels and I that's, I get the results that I want. It's convenient, it's easy, and they're just fun. I have them there in the palette hotel and I can just pull them down, bang, out, perfect. I've written their names of each color on the pans with one of my Storytime white paint pens, just in case you ask. And I'm placing color directly onto my plate with one of my batten blenders, which like all of the Making Faces collection, it all is made to emulate makeup. It isn't makeup. It just, it's just a fun way of creating and of, of creating art supplies for you that's different and inspiring and makes you want to pick things up. See how the, the, the palettes nest together? They're just so cool. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just using my Batten Blenders and I'll also be using the Blend In Sponges just to directly apply the pastel. Uh, I don't switch my batten blender around for every single color. I kind of just let the color build up on it and it's exactly as easy as it looks just applying the color. If you aren't getting the the palette pastel to stick to the plate it probably just is brand new uh, or it might be too clean. We might need to like I said before just use it up. Get it ready. Mine obviously has been used a lot. <laughs> I also just keep one sheet of the acrylic um, protective cover that comes with it on one side. I just really never take it off. And I have a whole video on uh, my Jelly Arts plate tips, um, which I will link in the description box below as well. What makes pastels so fabulous for adding color to skin and for creating a skin with texture and volume is that it is a very forgiving art supply and it blends so beautifully. So um, you can just 
literally pounce the colors on and if you don't like it just pounce a little more and it will blend it in and you can then add a stronger color or a lighter color or a darker etc whatever you want uh, like I, you just saw me there you can lift up your jelly arts plate and have a look just to see what it might look like from the back or what when it's printed and I want a painterly loose effect just like all of my artwork the other real benefit of creating like this rather than just creating straight in a journal is this technique actually seals the pastels completely so you won't get any there's no fear of things rubbing off or uh, any powder going anywhere I find that the palette pastels have fantastic sticking power in my art journals anyway but certainly not with this amount of uh, blending and patting in that I'm doing this does give you a different effect uh, and you will learn a lot in the process especially with shading now, I'm got, going to go into the ins and outs of where to shade I will have that in my um, online class which again like I said before it's free come along and join it's a lot of fun there's all sorts of different techniques I'm using all of my making faces art supplies but you can make different substitutions if you want to some of my palette pastels are actually shimmery metallic and foiled looks to them uh, this is the shimmering palette it's a color range called fishco tech actually has a mermaid tail uh, stamped into it. it's rather cute and i'm adding some of the gold and some of the shimmy this is more of a pearlescent effect the mineralize uh, palette pastel has it's far more glimmery and shimmery than this one this one's in between the very matte palette pastels and the, the shimmers but it gives like an actual eyeshadow that you would put on your face um you know some are matte some are shimmer that's a semi shimmer uh, you can build up colors but always keep in mind when you're working on any mono plate any type of printing like this you're working uh, backwards than how you would usually work usually you're putting stuff down one on top of the other and then that's it this this method we are building from the front back so whatever you've put down first that will be on top once we transfer it with acrylic and because you're not working on a surface already you haven't wasted anything so that's why I think this technique is really great for learning because it's very freeing and it, it also encourages you to work in a loose way which again can be great when you're learning this can be great <laughs> for educational purposes because you're not getting into that perfectionitis tightening and getting in your own way you're, you're in a free-flowing creative state of mind and that is the best state of mind for learning, in my experience. Now, I want to transfer this onto one of the tissue papers from my Whimsical and Wild book. So this is it's one of the pages from there, which I've removed from the book, which is perforated, it's meant to do that. And that's why I'm not adding color into the flowers, into the hair, into the, her background. I want that bright background to sort of peek through her skin color as well. And um, like I said, experimental process, I can always add more color over the top. I'm going to use two acrylic mediums to transfer my artwork from my jelly arts plate onto my paper I'm putting gesso down over where the palette pastel is this will also give uh, more body to the palette pastel give it a backing so not as much of the background will show through I could just also use the second medium that I'm using which is a matte medium I'm using the Jane Davenport brand Jess O and matte meaty yum uh, they are what I use and they are what I know work really well for this technique but you could certainly make your substitutions so I've just I'm using a, a soft rubber brayer and I'm just uh, wiping off excess on another journal cover one of my uh, canvas journal covers uh, rather than waste the paint I'm just wiping off the excess then I am putting clear matte medium on the other part so I do have my whole plate covered in acrylic which because gesso and matte medium and both versions of acrylic 
and then I'm placing my paper on here. Now this paper is very fine and I've never really done any, well I haven't done any uh, uh, plate printing on it before. So I wasn't really sure how it would work. Uh, as I soon discovered because it is fine, it did start to crinkle up because it's not really made for, you know, uh, liquid mediums which acrylic is it is a wet medium uh, but even though it does have this creasing i still love the end results so but i want you to know see how you can see the creases that is just from the moisture on the paper nothing can be done about that if you use a different type of paper it won't do that but if you want to use a fine paper you will get that creasing that creasing can look fantastic and can be used as a technique However, <laughs> if you're drawing a subject, you will end up with that creasing going across the subject. You will see that, but I just want you to be aware of what's going on and why. Now, not all fine papers will stand up to this. You'll have to experiment. Um, but I was very pleasantly surprised that even though this is a fine paper that you can collage with, I could still print on it. I haven't left it for too long. I've left it maybe for about six minutes. I do sometimes get impatient and just have a little peel up a corner just to see how things are sticking. And it's interesting to see what sticks the most. So you can see how the licensed Aquil pen, oh, it just works so well for this. Um, you can see how the palette pastel is uh, lifting off just brilliantly. Where it's thicker, there's obviously a point where it, it just gets too thick and it doesn't all um, pull off with the paper. Uh, but I think with different paint applications, different thicknesses, the longer you leave it, etc., you'll get different effects. But uh, you've got the, the juice is all on there. So I'm just carefully peeling that back. Uh, if you get paper sticking down, what that can often be is it's just too wet. Uh, and especially with a fine paper like this, like I said, the paper isn't really made for this purpose. We're pushing it to the limits, but, you know, when do we know, right? Uh, so sometimes what I'll do is just put it back. To, if I feel like I've hit a soft spot or things aren't quite dry or I haven't got too much pickup, I will put it back down, um, give it a little massage, give it a little bit of quiet encouragement, and then wait a couple of minutes and then try again. In regular jelly printing, you wouldn't worry if you had little bits of paint that were left off. It's all part of the experimental process, but because this is a face and we don't want pieces missing, um, that is why you just need to decide for yourself how much time you allow, how, how much you are bothered by pieces. Uh, see that big part next to her mouth? You know, you might want to put that back on, let it sit for longer. For me, I know that I can draw back over that and I kind of like things when they are a bit junked up like this. And as I said at the very beginning of the video, I'm not trying to uh, create a masterpiece here. I'm really trying to just step away from my, my big life and just concentrate on my art and have fun with this. So, you know, it's, it's not the be all end all. And I know that I can come back over with my LTQ pen and create. What I love about this process is uh, just that end result, the way that it looks, the palette pastel, this, it looks printed. Let me tell you, it looks like I've pulled it out of a book, the whole thing. Um, the crinkles to me in this instance sort of make her look like she's underwater, which then gives me ideas for other pieces. Like how can I emulate those lines going across uh, in other artwork? to give it that mermaidly feel. Uh, I'll also be thinking, how can I uh, make the stamps stand out more? How can I make, I could have put more gesso up there, more color. So that instantly makes me want to go back and do this whole thing again <laughs> and try that in a different way, maybe adding paint, uh, working differently, and that will be in the next video. But to finish this artwork off, I'm using drama sticks, I'm using my Storytime white paint pens to add extra little highlights. 
the palette pastel is completely sealed it's morphed in uh, it's just got that really beautiful soft effect on top of this bright background if I had to create this from scratch it would take a lot of time uh, a lot of days and, and not that I love doing making my artwork quickly like that's not the point uh, it's just for me as a creative outlet this is just a very very uh, satisfying nourishing suite of techniques <laughs> that I wanted to share with you because I found this fun so you might find it fun and that is why I am sharing it I also added some of my power pastels which is an adult version of the, pa the crayons that you had as a kid that just beautiful colors lots of fun I hope that you enjoyed this video if you want to see the longer version the lesson version you can join the my making faces um, workshop <laughs> you can find everything on janedavenport.com you can find my art supplies at fantastic retailers all around the world again stockists at janedavenport.com thanks for joining me oh.